sixth grade, module five, lesson 12, classwork. Example one. A, write a numerical expression for the volume of each of the rectangular prisms above. Okay, so the volume formula we've been working with so far is volume is equal to length times width times height. So I'm going to write the three, let's start with the first one. This one, one, two, three. So the first one, would be 15 inches times one and a half inches times three inches. The second one, so there's one, the second one would be 15 inches by one and a half inches by six inches. And then the third one would be 15 inches times one and a half inches times nine inches. So there's our three expressions for the volume of those rectangular prisms. What do all of these expressions have in common? So if we're looking at all these expressions, they all have 15 inches by one and a half inches. And then the height is different. So the Length and the width are all the same, but the height is different. So let's say they all have 15 inches by one and a half inches, and that is so the same length and width which length times width is equal to base so they have the same base rewrite the numerical expressions to show what they have in common so if we were to take that 15 inches by one and a half inches let's do 15 times one and a half would be 15 over one times three halves or 45 halves. And two goes into 45, well two goes into 40 20 times. So it go into 44 22 times and we'd have one half left over. So 22 and a half, this is equal to 22 and a half inches squared. So we could rewrite them all with just 20. So the first one would be 22 and a half inches squared by three inches. And then the second one is 22 and a half inches squared by six inches. And then the third one is 22 and a half inches squared by nine inches. So we rewrote it as the base times the height. D, if we know the volume for a rectangular prism is length times width times height, what's another formula, the volume, that we could use to find these examples? So what we just did is we took length times width is equal to the base. So instead of doing length times width times height, we could take the length and the width and just do the base times the height. So we could say area of the base times the height equals volume. So there's another formula that you could use. So area of the base times the height equals volume because area of the base is the length times the width. What is the area of the base for all of the rectangular prisms? So the area of the base for all of the rectangular prisms, we'd already figured that out, was 15, was it 15 inches by one and a half inches? And that was equal to 22 and a half inches squared. So 22 and a half inches squared was the area of the base. F, determine the volume of each rectangular prism using either method. So I'm going to use the um, area of the base times the height because we already know the area of the base. 
So for the first one, it's 22 and a half inches squared by is it three inches. So let's do 22 and a half by three. Um, I'm gonna do the box method because I don't wanna make 22 and a half into a mixed number. It's gonna be really big. So three times 22 is 66. One half times three is one and a half. I add those together, I get 67 and a half inches cubed. Uh, the second one is 22 and a half inches squared by six inches. So if I were to draw that, 22 and a half by six, 22 times six, um, let's see, is 132. Half of six is three, so 132 plus three is 135 inches cubed. And then the third one was 22 and a half inches squared by nine inches. Twenty-two and a half by nine, nine times twenty-two. And half of nine is four and a half. So we get two hundred two and a half inches cubed. as the volume. So we could also, so what we did is just took the volume of the base, multiplied it by the height. How do the volumes of the first and second rectangular prisms compare? The volumes of the first and third. So the first and second, so this one, this volume is half of the other one. So we multiplied by two to get to 135, and then to get to 202, it was multiplying by 3, which you can see if we multiply by 2, we get 6, and if we multiply by 3, we get 9. So that's why it multiplied in the way that it did. So first and second, we would say 135 inches cubed is 67 and a half inches squared times two. And then the first and third, 202 and a half inches cubed is equal to 67 and a half inches squared times three. Or, sorry, it was cubed. These are volumes. So that's how they compare the volume, and it's because that's how it is in the heights. And since these are all the same, 22 and a half, 22 and a half, 22 and a half, those don't change. So it's gonna multiply in the same manner that the uh, heights did. Example two. The base of a rectangular prism has an area of three and one fourth inches squared. The height is two and a half inches squared. Determine the volume of the rectangular prism. So we know the area of the base, so we can do area of the base times the height and get the volume. So let's do three and one fourth inches squared times two and a half inches. I'll make them improper fractions. Three and a fourth, three times four is 12. So we would have 13 fourths times two and a half would be five halves. 13 times five is 65. And four times two is eight. So 65 eighths, well I know eight times eight is 64. So it goes in eight times with one eighth left over. So we get eight and one eighth inches cubed as the volume. Extension. 
a company is creating a rectangular prism that must have a volume of 6 feet cubed. The company also knows that the area of the base must be 2.5 feet squared. How can you use what you learned today about volume to determine the height of the rectangular prism? So we know area of the base times the height is equal to volume. So let's fill in what we know in this formula. It must have a volume of 6, so it needs to equal 6 feet squared cubed. And the area of the base must be 2.5 feet squared. So what we don't know here is the height. And we can divide to figure that out, because here we're multiplying, so if we want to work backwards, let's divide by 2.5. So we need to do 6 feet divided by 2.5. So 6 divided by, I'm going to make them into fractions. 6 over 1 divided by 2.5 would be 5 halves. Remember, if I'm dividing fractions, if I want to solve it, I just flip the second one and multiply. So we get 12 fifths, which would be equal to 2 and 2 fifths. So the height is equal to 2 and 2 fifths feet.